All right, guys. I'm so excited to get underway. This this is back to the basics, right? So now that we've identified kind of our objectives of this conference and why we're here, what are the best ways to recruit and to expand the scouting is to have an effective unit. And throughout this conference, we want to focus on best practices. Philmont itself is, the theme of Philmont is best practice. This is how, it's, it's scouting's paradise, right? From the shooting range to the back country, they model how to, how to do activities uh, properly or the best way or the safe way, the scouting way. And so everything we teach it at uh, the training center as well, we want to follow that same theme. So we've prepared this, this presentation on, on it, um, having an effective unit. And this will, we're going we're gonna to switch between myself and then, and then Carl and then Chuck. We're going to take this into three parts with these six uh, topics. So we're going to start with effective meetings, um, kind of the, the basic unit of scouting, right? In my experience, every time I've had a scout and I ask them in a board review what their favorite part of scouting is, they usually say the campouts, right? They usually say, oh, the camping. I love the activities in the camping. The camping and those activities don't happen without effective troop meetings where you plan and, and prepare those things. So, when a scout brings a friend to scouting, it's the meeting where they're going to be first introduced to the, to the fun of scouting. So we're going to start with that. Now, has anyone in here ever sent a text to your fellow scout leader and say, what are we doing Thursday night? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we have all done that. And that's OK. You know, it, it's. It's a continual process to get better and to learn. So what we want to teach is the best practice and knowing that, well, we don't always achieve it, but we need to know how to run an effective meeting, how to do best practice, and strive toward it, and then teach others. That's one of our goals here, right, is to not only train ourselves, but so that we can expand and train other leaders. So. Start with an agenda, right? The agenda is key to having an effective meeting. Use all the components of that agenda. We're going to look at that agenda in a minute. Having games, having the fun part, we just talked about that. Um, you've got to have some fun. I've often said, if you make scout meetings like another school class, or if you make it like another church class, we're not going to get very far. Scouting is this wonderful mix of teaching and fun. If we make it more school or more church, it's not going to have the impact that we want it to have. Use lead and plan consistency. Troop leader resources. That's what I want to start with. Well, <clears throat> here's the meeting agenda, right? You've all seen this. It's kind of small. But all the components are there, and I want to switch to the components. These can be printed, they can be filled out online, it's a fillable PDF. Um, but what I want to point you to is the Troop Leaders Resources website. Troopleader.scouting.org. Don't reinvent the wheel. Having a, a good agenda and filling it out, and having each component of the meeting prepared, will make your meetings so much more effective. But all of the resources are there. You have, <clears throat> it was after this, but this website has games, has pre-opener games, instruction games, how to execute all of those, all of those parts of the meeting plan. So just to go over that, I have one more slide that I thought had the meeting plans. But the pre-opening, Having a game, one of our favorites was Captain on Deck. That was one of the best ones. They would play Captain on Deck while the scouts arrived, and the scouts would join in and start the game. That's one of our favorite ones. 
how to play Captain on Deck. I don't even really know how to play it. Our sons know how to play it. But there's a YouTube video on the Truth Leader Resources on how to do it. Um, and then you have an opening ceremony, group instruction, skills instruction, then you break out into your groups, right? Your patrols. And you have maybe another game. Leaders can vary, and then you have your closing with announcements and, and leader, scoutmaster in it. When we taught an ILST last year, we asked every scout, well, well I better not raise my voice too much. Every scout that had been to a meeting with all the components, every meeting that we've had that had all these components was awesome. We've had meetings without everything, and they, they, we got by and we did okay. Um, but it just wasn't the same. So please check out the Troop Leader resources. Troop Leader does. Now, when do you make that plan? So, moving on to the next section, planning is what I really wanted to get to because that's how all this happens. Dividing planning into three parts, annual planning, monthly planning, and meeting planning. So that, that agenda for the meeting, it's recommended to do that after your previous meeting. So skipping ahead to meeting planning, it's really nice after you have your meeting to gather your PLC right after meeting and go through the next week's agenda. But then skipping ahead, that's the weekly. Um, you need to have your monthly planning already sort of set, and then your annual planning. So backing up, annual planning should kind of come. I like to divide these up into these three, and annual planning is where we start. So if you have an annual plan, how in depth should we do it? That's what because, I want to get to. Yeah. <laughs> OK, because annual planning could yeah, yeah. I want to bring this all together, and I'm kind of starting with the meeting and then going back to the annual, kind of seems flip-flop. Um, so, so if you have a, so if you have an annual or a semi-annual plan, right, and you break it down by what topic or what event, uh, whatever you want to do, right. How in depth do you do that? Uh, do you do it by week, by month, by by year? That's exactly what I want to talk about. So, I, so I'm because you. yeah, because because starting with the weekly plan, you, you can't just sit down with a calendar of 52 weeks and say, okay, let's get let's start with 52 weeks. You just can't do that. So I want to start, and I wanted to show, if you could pull up my older one, Mike, if, it, if, if there happens to be a copy there, let me know if you can. Okay. It goes back to that analogy of the rocks, right? And, the, and the, you know, the jar, I had a picture of the jar where you put the red rocks in first, and then the gravel, and then the, and then the pea gravel, and then the sand, right? You have to do the big rocks first. What are the big rocks? Camp. Camps. <laughs> Camps are the big rocks. You, you cannot start planning without planning the camps. Your monthly camp out, your summer camp. You start with those. And you start with, so when I was a young scout leader, I remember talking about, you know, you'd always ask someone about scouting, the, the, you know, in the previous LDS units, and say, oh, this scout master was great. He just came up and said, we're going to camp the first Sunday of every, or the first weekend of every month. We're just going to do it. We're going to be consistent. And I thought, Okay, I get the idea of consistency and having a plan, but how do you do just the first weekend of every month? There, there are holidays on some of those weeks. I was like, how, does, how do you do that? So I started, well, let's get the calendar and let's pick out all the holidays. I'm not planning a camp on Labor Day weekend. You're not going to get anywhere there on Labor Day weekend or conference, conference weekend. So I started with the calendar. There are four weeks of every month. There are some months with five weeks. Those are just bonus month and they move around. We you start with the calendar and say, I pull out all the holidays. There's conference, there's Labor Day, there's Thanksgiving, there's Christmas. You know, I pulled all those out. Then you're down to three weeks every month. And then I pulled out, and I had a graphic to show this. 
Then I pulled out my own schedule. Yes, we're, we're people too, right? Well, I have my family reunion and I have my, my call weekend and I have my training weekend and I have all the important weekends that are important to me. Scouting doesn't happen without the leader. And we have lives too, right? So I pulled all those weeks out. And so then now you're down to two so weeks of every month. At, um, and then you grab your assistant. Missing some of the slides. Say, well, what weekends do you have? things that are important to you. Like Pretty soon you've narrowed down in a few minutes awesome. what weekend of every month you're going to camp that whole year. It really wasn't that hard. Those are the big rocks. And that's essential to do first. And then you add one more layer. And I had all this on the slide. I'm so I apologize. You add one more layer. Then you have your district events. When's the fall camp free? When's the spring camp free? When's the Klondike? When is the scouting for food? When is, when are all these district events? You gotta pull that district council calendar in. That's very next. Pretty soon you went from 52 weeks. I mean, you, you can whittle it down really quickly. So that's essential. And then you start as with your group. I look at Carl a lot, because Carl and I are the same truth. We do, we've done this. And then you look and say, okay, in St. George, Utah, where we live, well, what camp out makes sense during the summer. Well, we're not going to go where it's really hot. It's too hot. We're going to go up high. But then in the winter, what camp out makes sense in, in the fall, spring, winter? You know, you, it, it starts to become very, very simple. So one analogy that I've used all the time is Mad Libs. Who remembers Mad Libs? <laughs> I love Mad Libs, where you write down an adjective and a verb and a, you know. But then the story is on the next page. And this is the best analogy if I can think of for planning. We as leaders, we write the story. If the story is not written, it doesn't work. The youth pick the adjective and the verb. They pick out what the activities they want to do. They pick out, but we have to have this story written. We've got to have the logistics, the timing, the weekends, the locations. They don't know where to camp. We need to find out those local resources and figure out how to make it happen and write the story. Too many times I've been in, in scout meetings where you just sat down with the, with the scouts and said, okay, what do you guys want to do? It was just crickets, right? We have to have this story written and then have them fill in the blanks. And then they have, and that's what it means to have youth led. Youth led, but not always youth organized or youth planned. We, we need to make it easy for them to take the lead. We gotta show them the path. Uh, I'll quote something that, I don't wanna st steal this, but that analogy of a shepherd, whether you lead or you follow, a sheep herder and a shepherd. A sheep herder pushes the sheep, a shepherd they follow. Well, they only follow when they, when they, they follow when they don't know where to go. But the shepherd, and push them when they when they do know where to go. So it depends on what we've done with the youth. So big rocks. I, I guess we're not going to have that old one. Working so, on it. He's working on it. He's good. There's the big rocks. You're doing great though. Okay, good. Good. The camp plan. Yeah. So after that, then you do your monthly planning and your weekly planning. The monthly planning is going to be with your PLC, and it's going to be around program resources. And that's where I'm going to turn it over to Carl and talk about program resources. This is where you talk about your, your topics and your, your adventures that they pick, their, their activities they want to do. And, but not just the activities, but where do you put in the citizenship? Where do you put in the leadership? Where do you put in the first aid and those, those basics? Um, but when you get it whittled down to that, then you can meet with your PLC and come up with a monthly plan. What is our program, re um, program feature for this month? And what meetings do we need to do that program feature to achieve that camp? So if it's kayaking, and how many meetings do we need for kayaking and then our kayaking camp? And then you're ready for, okay, meeting one is safety, meeting two is instruction on paddling, and meeting three is camp preparation, and then you have your camp. So then your, your weekly meetings fall into place because you've got the big rocks and the gravel already in. That makes sense? All right, so 
planning is key. Any questions about plan? Who's, who's had successes or failures with planning? <laughs> We've all been there, right? Um, this is just a thought, but we're emphasizing the idea of youth led. In order to get to that competition between the shepherd or the, you know, which way we're going to go here, I think it's an important element to have people in the leadership roles who are trained to those roles. And the basic leadership skills, it's a weekend thing. If we can get a, a person who is going to be a unit leader to take that training, that will give them a starting point to where they can appreciate what it is to make a plan, how to make a plan, how to involve the youth in, in the decision-making process. You throw out some ideas, perhaps, that, that will be what I would call a guided discovery. They are going to stub their toe and hit it. You throw it out there the right way. And, and if you suggest, for example, well, how many of you guys would like to go to the What's that? Oh, wow, let me share. And you, you kind of throw it, and dangle a carrot. If anybody bites, okay, we got some interest. Now, when do we want to do that? Let's look at the, and, and start this ball rolling, but, but I think one of the tools that, that I've observed that seems to be lacking in a lot of scouting groups, pick one, is uh, somebody who has a passion to be in the role, but has no tools to work with because they haven't been trained and exposed to the tools. The, the slide that did come up there about the troop leader guide kind of thing. Fundamentals, I, I've got people on the district committee that have never even heard of the district operations manual. They're just doing it flying by the hip. And it, it, it's sort of like, okay, so what are our priorities? And how are we sticking with the mission here? Okay. Thank you for that. I agree. And it's so much easier than it used to be. You know, Part of our mission here is, is to train the trainers here. And there are so many things online now that you don't have to wait for that training. They can go watch those videos on Troop Leader Resources, and you can be side by side with them. There, there are so many ways to get people where they need to be now. Just, I'll, I'll be really quick. It always helped me when we did our annual planning to have the end goal in mind. What do we want to accomplish this year? You know, as an 11 year scout leader, I wanted to get them to first class in their first year. So that, that kind of helped me know month by month what we needed to do to get the boys to that bar. And so I, we always started with the end in mind. Perfect. We love that. That's a great begin with the end in mind. See the net? Well, here's what I, I just showed this. This is how I, there's the Mad Libs. Here's, my, here's the, the chart that I made with all, the, with all the weekends. And then I added, I took out the holidays. And then I added my, my important things, right? And I made this deliberately very specific. You know, this is when I have my favorite unit. This is when my wife's birthday is, right? As if we have every <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's because Rachel wants to. I, I wish that we, we didn't do it on her weekend, but we did. Anyway, but that's the point. This is real This is real life. We are real people. And then I added the district and council. So this is how you whittle it down so quickly. I have to say how nice you have Mother's Day. Came as a, Father's Day is not in June as a, as a weekend. June is like totally open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. June is the best camping month ever. Okay, so with that, Let's turn it over to Carl to break it down now that we've got our camp plan. How do we get that monthly thing and talking about what you said? Um. All right. Um, do I need the microphone for the, for no. the video or something? Because I, I talk pretty loud. So. Good, Carol. Okay. All right. <laughs> but I get excited, I get loud. I get kind of, yeah, this 
this type of stuff, I, I love training. Um, I don't know if it's just because I like to hear the sound of my own voice or something like that, but I just really like it. So um, when it comes to the, the pro program plan, um, when it comes to our scouts, we were talking about the scouts being the ones, that they, they're the ones that really want to drive this. What is it that they want to do? And when we're going through that, it's really sometimes difficult uh, for us as leaders, because you know, what, what is it that you want to do as scouts when we talk about basketball? And this, this is one thing that actually was a big change and shift for us when we left church scouting, is to come into what is the, now the open possibilities? Because a lot of times with church scouting, we're just kind of doing the same old things, or we were just kind of, oh, we're just doing the trail to first class, we're just doing all these things, but it's all about advancement. So we kind of forget about some of the other things and the activities. And so there is a lot of, of available, and what we do is when we start our annual plan, we get all of our boys together and we say, what kinds of things do you want to do? And they'll just start, you know, we, we give them a little sheet, basically, you know, what types of things, it has a whole bunch of list of activities that they might be interested in, uh, and then we'll say, okay, what are these types of things? Rate these based on what you want to do. And so as part of that, then they go through that process, and then we conglomerate that all together. Okay, these are the top things that you said you wanted to do. And one of the cool things about the program features, now who has seen the program features? So there are, there are three of these. So there's three volumes to this. There's about 15 features in each one of them. And I'm actually surprised because sometimes our boys would come up with these things that they want to do, and I'm like, well, there's probably not a program feature for that. Mm -hmm. But and like this last year, I thought they want to do skateboarding. I'm like, skateboarding? That was like back in the 80s when I was like, <laughs> there's like they still do skateboarding? And then so they, they're like, oh, there's probably not a program feature. There is a skateboarding program feature in here. So what it is, is it lines up, and, it, and you can just basically go in and find it. So obviously camping is number one in this, in this one. And so what it allows you to do, I'm not the one that likes to invent the wheel, because I'm not very good at that. So using all the resources, as Matt was talking about, is really an amazing thing. And these are all available. So when you go, it actually has the instructions at the beginning on here on how to kind of utilize it. But now we go to camping. So what it's going to do is it has the camping feature. It has a little bit of an explanation toward it. It will go through each of these different things. It has the objectives. Uh, it talks about some of the key points of, of camping, things that, that are really important for camping, and how to use, you know, like the trucker's hitch. How to, do, how to do washing dishes to make that important. You know, different things like that. So it'll have a few little things, and then it has some camp, it has like camping games. So it has games in here that you can utilize. And it even has the edge method in here on how to do some of the teaching with that. And then as Matt kind of showed, it has these meeting plans. And so it goes through each week. And so like week number one, this one's talking about campsites. So week number one, you're gonna talk about campsites and how to do that. It actually has, and it's interesting, so this is like, like skiing too. So maybe you have some advanced, so you have the green, blue, and the black diamonds. And so depending on what your group is, if you have brand new 11, 12 year old scouts, you might just be doing this the little green dot one, the easy, and it's gonna tell you the types of things you're going to do. And some of it is like, oh, learn to the top line hitch. Oh, we're working on the trail first class. So it's built into this program. Um, but maybe you have some seasoned ones. Maybe you're doing venturing scouts or something like that. So utilizing the above skills and then erect a dining fly as effectively and efficiently as possible. How many of you have seen the Philmont dining fly? That's what we call it. Is that, uh, it's it. called the Philmont dining fly. So what that is, and did you have a question? I did. I was sure. curious. You talked about, um, for example, the knots uh -huh. were working on uh, Amer uh, uh Rank. Rank, thanks. I was like, well, sure. Uh -huh. And um, does it identify in there that that is working on that rank? Um, it doesn't specifically. Okay. So it doesn't say this is first class rank. It doesn't. One, but it does say here's two half hitches and learn how to tie the clove hitch and, okay, a, couple, and a couple of different things like that. Uh, you kind of have to kind of be a little more intuitive yeah, with that. But, but so the Philmont Dining Play, and we started doing this. We actually, we should have done this when we did camp last week because we actually had a little rainstorm. But what we do is when we unload, Let's say it's like the third thing we do. So as soon as we've unloaded, we take a dining fly and basically it's two poles and it's and you pick it's basically a large tarp and you're tying off each of these things and you basically create a dining fly, a big giant dining fly out of it. And you make it as big as you would like to do. It's one of the first things we do. But you use the bow line, you use 
the taut line hitches, you use the clove hitches. There's a whole bunch of, I mean, there's a ton of knots you use in that, and it's a great practice and a great skill. We've even done it for, for troop nights a couple of times just to practice knots. But that's, a, that's one of the things that's in here. So for those that are more advanced, you can do that. So that's the camp meeting sites, that's the first week, you know, second week, and each one of these is like that. You know, durable, using durable surfaces to camp on. Uh, proper sanitation and dishwashing. So you're gonna go through it. It's, it's lined out each of these different weeks, uh, fires and stoves. And now we actually get to the main event. So overnight car camping. So if you're gonna do an overnight car camping where you're just gonna pull right up and, and unload this stuff, there it is. Um, camping with teens. There's a Kodiak challenge in here. That's, that's part of one of the activities. Um, but it'll take you through and you can go through a couple of these different plans. So it basically walks you through what you're going to do each week instead of what are we gonna do this week? And you utilize this, so we talked about uh, leadership. We utilize our youth leadership. So when we go to our PLC meeting, we're gonna pull this out, say, okay, what was the program feature for this month? It's camping, okay, well, let's open this up. This is what we're gonna do, it lines it up, and then you can utilize your troop meeting guide as part of that, you're gonna be able to use that, and your senior patrol leader now has everything lined up he knows what he's going to do, he can make the assignments that he wants to do, and it's all lined up ready to go. So the program features is an excellent way to be able to utilize and find out you know, what it is you want to do. But I mean, like I said, skateboarding, you know, like, we're not going to find a program, we're going to figure out what to do that. It's in here. You know, backpacking, um, outdoor ethics, you know, paddle sports. So they keep this really, you know, pioneering. So it's an amazing resource. And if you don't have these, I think you can download them. Um, but I actually got the actual copy from the, uh, the Scout store and I put them in a binder so I have them. Um, I keep them in my nice Philmont bag from years ago, but there are three binders of these basically to utilize to help uh, with that planning. And it, it helps build that process so you don't have to come up with it from scratch and figure out what am I gonna do? Uh, how am I gonna figure that out? It's an incredible so, tool. It is, it's amazing. Yes. Thanks now, be a scout I, mean, Mary Jane. I just wanna add that Gary Dollar, who's <laughs> here, he authored those. Oh, well then. So, <laughs> so I think he had a couple people that he worked cool. with, but that's like his baby. Thanks. So, yeah, so another thing about it, so incredible. we go back and forth on this. We, we get excited and we start utilizing it and we start re having really effective meetings and everything and then we kind of start getting lazy a little bit, mm -hmm. kind of falls off or maybe we miss our PLC, something like that for whatever reason and then we start getting, and now we're back to that, you know, what are we, what are we doing this week, trying to figure that out. So it's, just, it's an up and down thing, it's, it's really, it's, it's tough, it's hard. It's, it's, this is a new thing for us in scouting to be able to move forward and have all these resources and to try to follow the plan because we're so used to the old thinking of trying to cope with those different types of things so and one mistake that we did make we got so excited one day that we um we planned too many of those we needed to allow room for some of the advancement and some of the service so we kind of decided we need to not have one every month or not all adventure you need to have your citizenship and your first aid and you need to bring those things back in. So yeah. Oh, one of the good things we had, we, we all of them they wanted to do the cycling merit badge. They all wanted to do the mountain biking merit badge, or well, the cycling merit badge, but they want to do the mountain biking. And so there is a mountain biking one in here. So we utilized this along with integrating that merit badge into it. And so we taught the merit badge class as part of that, and integrating these in. And then obviously the rides took us almost a year. It was, it was actually the starting of COVID. Uh, but it, it took us almost basically a year almost to the month that to actually finish all the rides uh, But it was a really great opportunity So we built that into it based because that's what the boys wanted to do But we utilize this to help guide that so I know we're We can move pretty through that but I do have these if you do want to check them out uh, take a look at them That'd be great. But thank you so much so when you do your yearly planning meeting, after you get all your camp and camp outs and camps going, do you, how do you select what program features to do? Do you, so there's three volumes of 15, so it's about 50, right? Give or take? About that, yeah. So do you pick as leaders, get together and say, hey, all right, let's work on these five things this year. And you make them definites and tell the boys, hey, we're working on these five things, but 
You will. So you said you had to take these out. So, so then you want to work on it. You guys choose another five out of this list, and you give them the other 45, or do you give them like a sampling we, of what it is that you we actually to take? The boys actually choose that. So they, they actually say, these are the things that we want to do. Where do you grab that from? Yeah, we do it. We, there's a there's a recent there's a survey. Okay, so you use a survey. It's an uh -huh. interest survey yeah. with those topics, and we just say you can only circle. We had them circle ten, but it was way too many. Five. Yeah. yeah. See, we had them all papers. Say circle your top five, rank them one, two, three. Your top three, rank them, and then we sort of compile that data and say, look, the majority were interested in these three to five activities, and we'll we'll put in the other stuff. But no one's going to vote for citizenship and. And you know some of the other program features that you need to do them. So that's why we kind of went from ten to five. And that's kind of where the PLC comes in too, because the PLC is the leadership, and they understand that other things need to be done too. So they, yeah, they want to do the fun stuff, but they also understand we need to do citizenship, and so we work with them to help integrate that into it. And so that way, the, boy, the the scouts know that this was kind of a vote. It was kind of a majority. This is what we're most majority interested in, and then it worked out well. After that, we. we they felt like they participated. They're doing, we, and so we have this. Well, I can tell you. I don't want to take from Chuck. It, it takes a little while to work out. I mean, yeah. it's it's a new thing. It's, but, but we ended up going scuba diving, which I thought was it was a was it. A, well, what's the word I'm looking for? It was obscure. Well, it was higher than I thought. Am ambitious. Ambitious. That's the word. Yeah. It's ambitious, but we yeah. did it. Because they voted for it, we made it happen. We went to Catalina, Iowa, and from Utah, it was, it was fantastic. So cool. It was, it was, after having completed that, I thought, we can do anything, because we're doing it the right way. Well, can you go to Catalina? Can you go to We went to Emerald Bay Camp in Catalina, Iowa, it was fantastic. And it was a year, it was a year in advance that we, we had that interest survey, and we made it happen. Well done. Now, I want to turn the time over to Chuck to talk about committees, because you can't function without a committee. So take it away, Chuck. Thanks. All right. Can I get my slides back up there? There we go. That's one. All right. I'm Chuck. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Thanks. Um, I've been on the scouting wagon for 42 years. Um, and I've got a couple things I want to talk to you about today. And am I okay without the mic? You guys all hear me? Okay, great. All right, so how many of you have seen a functioning committee in a unit before? Raise your hand. So about half of you. So maybe a little more. They're rare. A functioning committee is very rare but it's completely necessary. Now, you don't have to have 20 people sitting around the table, but you at least need four or five that are dedicated to their jobs and are really, really have the uh, best interest of the unit at, at heart. They really want things to go forward. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, um, but I want, to, I want to just drive the point home that you can't do it by yourself. So if you're a scoutmaster, and we saw this a lot before we broke away from the church, scoutmaster was called, well that scouted your job. Congratulations, <laughs> the troop's yours. And you had nothing. And some wards called committee chairs, and some didn't, and some did all volunteer, and it just didn't work very well very often. So <clears throat> don't get stuck in that rut. Make sure that if you are a leader of a unit, that you don't even accept the position <laughs> until you've got a team. You need to come in it all together as a as a group that's dedicated to the to the boys or girls that you're serving. Um, <clears throat> so I grabbed this off the internet from scoutermom.com. You can find really great stuff on the internet if you look. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and this uh, this this quote I'm just going to read to you real quick. So it says, the Scouts PSA Troop Committee is essentially the board of directors for a Scouts PSA Troop. This committee is a group of at least three people who assist with supervision and management of the unit to help provide the resources that the youth leadership need to carry out their plans. The committee also ensures that a Scoutmaster 
has the resources and support to provide the program in accordance with PSA policies and regulations. <clears throat> you can't do it by yourself. You need a team. So there will be what we'll talk about committees and other uh, other at other times. I'll move on to my next topic, which is outdoor ethics for 100. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so outdoor ethics is clearly important. It's important to take care of of our Heavenly Father's creations when we go out and, and utilize them. <clears throat> we might have muddled them up a little bit in scouting in the last little bit, uh, but if we all go back to our, our scouting, probably our earliest memories of scouting, uh, you might remember something about leaving it better than you found it. Now, that's a good quote. It's a good place to start. Yeah with outdoor ethics. The problem is defining better. <clears throat> we sometimes disagree about what better is. And uh, so for example, here at Philmont, we've got bears. What do you do if you're out with your troop and everybody gets up in the morning and maybe you've got them trained well enough to brush their teeth, what do you do when you've got that mouthful of toothpaste in bear country? <laughs> What's better in that circumstance? Spitting it in the bush next to your tent? Or going and finding the sump and making sure it's rinsed out? You gotta know what better is and you gotta know that better changes depending on where you are. So if you're at you know, State Park and you're parked next to your car and there's a trash can, okay, you're good. You got a water spigot, you got all that. But if you're out in the Philmont backcountry, better is different. So we utilize in the BSA um, two different organizations to represent outdoor ethics. Most people have heard of Leave No Trace. Fewer people have heard of Tread Lightly. Um, <clears throat> both groups have similar uh, principles that they follow to achieve the same goals of better. Um, sometimes we can get bogged down in the details of these. Now, Leave No Trace is the older group. Um, it was part of the, in fact, I was part of the pilot in the 90s here at Philmont for the original Leave No Trace program. Um, it's the older one. It's got a lot of ties into the Forest Service and and uh, so it has a lot of government speak and a lot of, I don't know, it's really, it's more formal. Tread Lightly is a nonprofit out of Utah um, that is more, in my opinion, youth friendly um, in the way that they uh, do things. and. Uh, <clears throat> Both of these organizations, the reason we added Tread Lightly, Leave No Trace covers wilderness mostly, uh, forest service type stuff. Tread Lightly expands uh, to cover things like when we added the ATV program and different ways that we utilize the outdoors that the forest service may or may not agree with. We've got Tread Lightly to cover those activities. Um, so there are lots and lots of resources from both of these organizations that are available to you through your scout offices. Uh, and through the internet. All right, the new scout patrol. Finally, something that the LDS Church has a reputation for being great at. The new scout patrol, we used to call them the 11-year-old scout patrol, um, <clears throat> the blazer patrol if you've been in a long time. Um, <clears throat> this is a great idea. And some troops outside of the church adopted it and some didn't, but it is a great idea for in one year to get those new scouts to first class. Um, it's something that you should implement no matter how many boys you have, even if that new group only has two. They need to be progressing so that when they get to that first year, they can start moving on and doing higher level stuff with their, with their troop. Um, Kids really feel left out uh, when they're still tenderfoot after two years. Uh, it really makes a makes a huge difference. Um, <clears throat> see, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Let me double check. Oh yes, to add to what uh, to what Matt was saying, um, this idea of boy led it doesn't necessarily mean boy motivated. <laughs> So if you leave it up to the boys to come ask you, hey, will you sign this off for my tender? It's not going to happen. <clears throat> there needs to be somebody watching, somebody encouraging, someone 
gently pushing so that they make those steps because kids will always go play volleyball or whatever they're doing outside rather than work on something that doesn't seem quote unquote fun. So new scout patrols are great. Can I, yes. Can I just add, if we make sure we have those opening games and games in the middle of our meetings, they have less of a desire to constantly lead whatever you're doing. But right. if you come and you get straight to business and you're always straight to business, you can't hold on to them. But doing those activities. And sometimes in larger troops you have different patrols doing different things and that's where you get the distractions. Mm -hmm. I've noticed a difference between like 11 to 13 and a half and then when 14 happens a change takes place where they're interested in other things and they want to hang around with the 11 year olds that are still Cub Scouts and Scout uniforms and, and I think that's a good point about you know keep them kind of occupied the newbies keep them occupied with something as a distraction or a break but <coughs> When they start getting around first class is when they start getting qualified to do other things. We used to have an incentive program in my unit where if you were a first class scout, you could go on this special camping trip to this place. If you got to be a star scout, then we were going to go to the base and camp out over there and eat with the, the people in uniform and all that kind of stuff. All right, I'm going to ring you back in now because I'm almost out of time. Yep. <clears throat> all right. Thank you for your um, yeah. And you guys can continue that conversation either as a small group or as a patrol. Uh, leadership training for the youth. How many of you are familiar with ILST and NYLT and mm -hmm. NAIL? So about half of you have some kind of idea of what that is. Um, oops, that was too many. So ILST is a program that's either put on in your units or sometimes by districts and councils uh, to uh, prepare kids to go on to NYLT which for those of you who are this double place, <laughs> um, <clears throat> for those of you who are wood badge trained or familiar with wood badge NYLT is almost the exact same syllabus as wood badge without the ticket and a couple of tweaks here and there but it's mostly the same presentations and so you're sending your kids to a junior version of wood badge um, and if they excel at that then they can come to the program here at Philmont, which some of you met some of the nail kids the other day before they went up to the Rialto Ridge. Um, <clears throat> the next level, yet again, uh, for the, and these kids come back ready to be senior patrol leaders and patrol leaders and to push, really kind of take a lot of pressure off of you as a, as a leader. I got one thing I'm gonna finish up with here. Uh, I'm not gonna do that yet. Um, I'm going to tell you a quick story about um, being boy-led. So back, I don't know, it was about 15, uh, maybe a little more, years ago, I was scoutmaster of a troop in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, <clears throat> we were a new troop, brand new formed, and it was an LDS troop. It was a new ward, new troop. And we went on our first camp out. And the boys had planned it. They had this menu. They went and bought groceries. And we showed up at camp, we set up, and we're like, all right, it's time to cook. And they didn't have any pots. So we had all this raw food, we had nothing to cook it in. And they had they decided to do bacon and eggs for dinner. So we had raw bacon, raw eggs, sitting on a picnic table in a state park with a bunch of sad faced boys. And had, being an experienced scouter, I had a packed lunch for me. Um, so I was sitting off to the side, not worrying about them at all. And um, <clears throat> They really were kind of, they were looking pretty sad. And then it happened. And one of the boys stood up and he had a soda can that he was drinking out of. And he guzzled it down and he pulled out his pocket knife and he cut the top off of it and he cracked an egg in it and he set it in the fire. He didn't say anything. The whole troop started doing it. Then they dropped a piece of bacon in after they finished their egg, and they all ate and went to bed full. Mm -hmm. That's boy bed. And I'll leave you with that. Thank you all. You can tell how there's so much information to get through. We're out of time. But like you said, I think that we need to continue these conversations through the week. 
We're going to have another session tomorrow on strengthening units, which will just be kind of a continuation of what we're talking about right now. Because how many of you here have started a unit? Almost everyone, right? You're in the trenches, you've done this, but we want to make sure that we help each other get it, get better, get better and better and better. So these conversations, I, I hope to keep having them in between sessions, because we still have enough time to have a session on everything. But I love to hear these stories about how you dealt with what happened. We had the same thing happen. We had this camp out in November. We had everything planned, we had everything ready, but the propane was too cold. The propane tank wasn't full enough, and it, the stove wouldn't work. We had all this food, how do we cook it? Well, we figured out a way. We figured out a way to do it over a fire, and we, we, the, 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 they figured it out. And that's, what, that's some of the magic of scouting. I love that story. Because that is the magic. What do you do when things go wrong? Because they're not always going to go right. And I love those stories. So with that, let's close. And um, those of you who need to pick up children, it's now time. So thank you.